D.C. is a place where Latinos get to talk politics, be in Congress, be in the Senate, and make changes in the laws. I'm John Leguizamo, and this is a first look at Leguizamo Does America. Part of going to D.C. was celebrate the fact that Latinos, we discovered America. We've been here for over 500 years and before because we were great empires, Aztecs, Incas, Mayas, Tainos, before that. We were the only ethnic group to fight in every single war America's ever had and the most awarded in every war America's ever had. I'm talking about American Revolution, Civil War, War of 1812 that nobody cares about, but we, we cared, we fought. And the numbers of us who sacrificed our lives, 120,000 in World War I, 500,000 World War II, the contributions are huge and made America. We saved America. We protected America. D.C. has a museum for everything. American history, African-American history and culture, the National Archives, and the list goes on and on. But yo, there's a big one missing. A museum honoring the contributions of Latinos. And we deserve a place on the National Mall. Believe me, I know. I did my homework for my show, Latin History for Morons. The good news is the Smithsonian and Congress are building the Museum of the American Latino. And I've been pushing to make it happen by raising money and joining the board of the Friends of the American Latino Museum. We need this NECA where we can all come and bring our grandchildren so they see themselves celebrated, honored, respected, because this country wasn't made without us. It was made because of us. One of the, my most important missions in my life is to get the Latino Museum in the mall and built before I die. Because this is so important for our contributions to be seen, to be studied, to be honored, and for ourselves to see what we contributed to the making of America. So yo, I promised that I would talk politics. And believe me, I got a lot to say about equal representation, meaning who's sitting in those fancy buildings around town and who's not. So Latinos are about 20% of the U.S. population, right? But they're only 10% of Congress. Does that seem right to you? nah -uh. Well, Congressman Richie Torres, a Puerto Rican representative from the Bronx, doesn't think so either. You know, like in New York City, we have one of the largest Latino populations. Yes. And yet there's not a single Latino in the leadership of the New York what? City government. So that means that there's never been a Latino in any of the top three citywide elected offices in a town that is, well, so Latino. You know, and a wise person once said, if you don't have a seat at the table, then you're probably on the menu. Oh, snap. Richie Torres, to me, is an example of American Latinx exceptionalism. Here's this first openly gay Afro-Latino congressman. Also incredibly young, brilliant, fighting for better housing, fighting for uh, inclusion, fighting for Latinx people, because we need a voice in Congress. And Richie Torres is that voice, as is AOC, as is so many uh, new faces in Congress. We finally have better representation than we've ever had. I mean, it's not equal because we're 20% of the population. We sh it should be 20% of congressmen and 20% of the Senate. And hopefully that'll happen. That's why we got to vote. That's why you got to run for office. And I'm going to do everything I can to help you. For years, superstar Diane Guerrero has been out there pushing for change, whether it's getting out the vote or standing up for immigrants' rights. I share my struggle to help open eyes to the agony that every one of these kids will face forever. She's been on the front lines. What, what propelled you into activism? Well, my family was separated when I was 14 through uh, deportation. My entire life, I kind of like lived in the shadows with them, even though I wanted, we so wanted to be alive and, and living amongst the living. <laughs> so I was inspired by just simply telling my truth because my entire life I was like told to lie about really? me, my parents, everybody. We couldn't be honest about who we were. Imagine that being 14 and their parents and brother are taken away from you and you're left all alone to your, to your own devices only because the immigration naturalization process is so impossible for immigrants and it's flawed, it's damaged. It needs to be fixed so that people can naturalize. People who are contributing, who are giving to this country need to be able to naturalize quickly and easily. Not the contrary, to be stalled, to be forced into the shadows. I mean, that's not okay. It didn't happen to any white immigrants. It shouldn't happen to Latin and black immigrants. 
Hey, thanks for watching. You can catch the full length episodes at 10 p.m. on MSNBC and the next day on Peacock. Hey, it's going to be legit. I'm telling you, it's going to be fire.